Good morning. I'm Riley, and this is Lifestyle Tucson, a program where I speak with nonprofit groups and organizations, finding out how they serve our community and getting updates on current projects. For today's show, I am sharing my recent conversation with Gabriel's Angels. I'm speaking with... My name is Georgette Rosberg. I go by George, and I am the program manager for Southern Arizona for Gabriel's Angels. And I'm Maureen McCoggan, and I am a part of a therapy team volunteer for Gabriel's Angels in Southern Arizona, and my partner in crime is Jasper, who's a pit bull mix. So uh, Gabriel's Angels has been operating in Southern Arizona for, I saw, a little over 20 years. I'd like to start off, will you just tell me more about how it got started and a bit of the mission of the organization? Yes, it actually started 21 years ago when our founder, Pam, had a little Weimaran or puppy named Gabriel. And she was also volunteering at a crisis shelter, and she found that the children there were pretty shut down. So she decided to take her puppy there to the Christmas party, and it showed up with his little ears flopping down with reindeer antlers on his head and jingle bells around his neck, and the kids really opened up. And she thought, this is a thing. We're going to do this. And 21 years later, we are up in Prescott, soon to be Flagstaff, hopefully, and then down here in Tucson as well. We've been in Tucson since about 2008. Tell me a bit more about how this works. So you're combining pets and at-risk children. Expand upon. So our primary focus is to work with children that have had adverse childhood experiences. So we go into Title I schools, we do residential facilities and assessment centers or counseling centers, and we have three main programs where our volunteer pet therapy teams visit with them. One is our animal-assisted activities, which is what Maureen and Jasper do at one of the schools in town that she'll tell you about. And one is our ABC program, which is a read to the dog program called Animal Books and Children, and that's for elementary schoolers. And we have another one where we work with individuals to kind of enhance their therapy. Yeah, well, Maureen, tell me more about this program. So Jasper and I have volunteered at a couple places. Um, most recently, we've been working at Mary Meredith K-12. through What we do there is we visit basically every other week, help the kids with an amount of consistency, a relationship that they can count on. Um, they know Jasper's coming. They can look forward to it. When we're there, um, we do a variety of activities, so depending on the week. So most recently, we've been doing training with Jasper. The kids love to teach Jasper how to do tricks, helps them sort of learn to be kind to him and how to use positive reinforcement to get him to do the tricks that that they're asking him to do. One of their favorites to do with him is something called Find It, which is his favorite game. So... They'll hide a treat and then ask him to go find it and sort of walk along with him to find it. We've incorporated kindness message with that, and so I call it Jasper's Find It, Kind It game. Before our visit, we'll come up with cards. Jasper and I create cards that have his paw print on them. So do that at home. Go to the school. Once we're there in the class, sort of present these cards to the kids. Say, Jasper and I would like you to, on the back of that card, write a way that you can show kindness to someone before our next visit. So depending on the age of the kid, (laughs) they can either write it or they can dictate it. So we're working with children who are kindergarten through 12th grade. Okay. So it's a wide variety of ages, um, wide variety of learning abilities, Mm -hmm. um, that kind of thing. And so they will do that. They go then hide the card along with a treat, come back, ask Jasper to go find it. Once he has, we talk about that then is a promise to Jasper that they're going to try their best to do that kindness behavior before we come visit the next time. And then when we do our next visit, we talk about whether they were able to do that behavior, whether they were able to be kind in the Mm -hmm. way that they promised Jasper they would be, and then sort of discuss about, you know, sort of how they can continue to carry that out through other activities, talk about, you know, sort of what other things Jasper would do, how he would like them to Mm -hmm to be kind to other people. Yeah. So although these pets are providing a a bit of like a therapy service, they're not necessarily therapy dogs. Am I correct in that? Or are these? They're registered therapy dogs Mm -hmm. and the handlers are trained and they have to be evaluated with their dog. 
And it usually takes a minimum of three months. If your dog is old enough and you've had the dog for at least six months, if your dog is pretty ready to go, it usually takes three months to get scheduled and registered with therapy organization. If the dog doesn't have the training and maybe isn't fully socialized yet, it could take a bit longer. Okay. And that's what's hard for us because the pet therapy dog career is not very long. Mm -hmm. A lot of the dogs cannot do it until they've mellowed out. Some dogs hit the ground and are ready to start visiting at a year old, but other dogs, like some of the bouncier breeds, <laughs> maybe a golden, <laughs> yeah. uh, they might need to wait until they're about five when they've okay. mellowed out a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. a really nice exercise for confidence building. Mm -hmm. The exercises that Maureen and Jasper do, especially the dog training and the find it, one of our core behaviors that we want to teach the kids is confidence. Mm -hmm. And for them to tell a dog something simple like sit or shake, their faces light up because mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. like, oh, this dog was listening to me. I, I just told this dog to do something and he did it and I'm good at this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, taking pride in something yeah, that they absolutely. have done. Absolutely, they they you should see their. I mean, their faces do. They light up, and then when he's looking for a treat, they're super invested in whether he can do it. And then when he does, they're just they celebrate with him. Mm -hmm. He's like chowing down, and they're like, "Oh, you did it! You you found what I what I asked you to find." Yeah. He loves it, and it warms my heart to to see them sort of that switch turn mm -hmm. on, to see them light up, to see them sort of come out of their shell a little bit more. That they're willing to you know, be confident enough to tell Jasper to do something and then to watch him do it mm -hmm. is is amazing. And I can imagine, especially for a child coming from a more challenging uh, situation or background, it may be a little easier to kind of create that emotional connection with a therapy dog as opposed to like one-on-one -on -one with a person or a grown-up. It's you know. so true. In fact, when you first of all, when you walk into a room like we did with Jasper his first day at Mary Meredith, the elementary kids just scream. Mm -hmm. They're just so excited. Oh, There's a dog yeah. in here. And, and to have that consistency, like Maureen said, where they're coming back every week, not only does it give them something to look forward to, but it gives them a, a feeling that they mean something yeah. to somebody, and it helps them build a relationship. Mm -hmm. A lot of these children maybe didn't grow up in a family where their parents knew empathy and could teach them empathy. Mm -hmm. So not only did did they not learn that really important social skill, but they probably learned something negative in its place. Mm -hmm. So for a team like uh, Maureen and Jasper to come in and do activities where the children are showing empathy towards a dog is really filling a need that those children have to learn and to grow to become compassionate and understanding kids. Mm -hmm. They will put a stethoscope on Jasper's heart and listen to his heartbeat and realize he's a living thing mm -hmm. and I'm a living thing. She'll have him get water. Mm -hmm. The kids get mm -hmm. water for mm -hmm. him to enhance the relationship. Yeah, so they, every moment is helpful. Yeah, I, I mean, and you can tell that they're excited that he's coming to visit. So George visited with Jasper and me when we went for Christmas and when we pulled up to the school there were kids on the playground and like just start screaming Jasper like screaming his name yeah. and he's pulling and he's like let's go come on I want to go see my kids and we were locked out <laughs> and they're just waiting for Jasper so you can see that relationship form yeah. over time and that consistency is so important mm -hmm. to these kids again because mm -hmm. they've come from perhaps a difficult background mm -hmm. to have a sort of a loving affiliation, a relationship that they can count on is really, really mm -hmm. important. You're listening to Lifestyle Tucson. I'm Riley and I'm speaking with Georgette George Rosberg, program manager at Gabriel's Angels and Maureen McCoggan, a therapy team volunteer. So how do you normally get in contact and connected with uh, your therapy pets? Like, like in, how we find Yeah, teams. how you find your teams. So mm -hmm. it's, it's really an interesting formula because you might meet a dog that's just a great dog and really social, but their handler might not be into it. Mm -hmm. You know, they might be shy. So it takes a special dog and it takes a special person. And when you're registering to become a therapy team, 
the people that are evaluating you are looking for teamwork above and everything. They don't need you or your dog to be a rocket scientist mm-hmm. and know the most advanced tricks in the world, but they want to see that you're advocating for your pet and that you have a caring relationship that you're illustrating mm-hmm. so that that's what the children see. Mm-hmm. So an, a dog that would be fit for this is someone who's calm and that seeks attention from others. I had a dog in the past who was a great pet therapy dog, and then I had another one who only had eyes for me. Mm. And taking that dog to visit the kids at Maureen's school wouldn't have been beneficial for them at all because she would not have been into them. So you need a special dog who's open to receiving attention, and then you need a really special person who wants to help the children, who doesn't interrupt the children when they finally open up, who can take an awkward silence and make a child feel comfortable. So our challenge is to find teams like this mm-hmm. that, that want to help and that have the time mm-hmm. to commit to this every week or every other week. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Building off that, what would be the process like for someone who, say, has a therapy dog that they would like to share with Gabriel's Angels? Okay. They would find us. They would listen to us today or yes. find us on <laughs> the Internet. They can find us on the United Way's volunteer portal or go to our website, and first step is to sign up for our virtual information session where they get to learn about the history and a little bit more detail of our programs. And then sometimes they're already a registered pet therapy team with someone else, and they can start a little bit sooner. Sometimes they need to go through the training and testing process Mm -hmm. next. After that, we meet for a one-on-one orientation where they can learn more specifics about the program, and then we go over the facilities, places that we have waiting Mm-hmm. for pet therapy teams. We and there's a lot waiting. We do have that, waiting yeah, schools. Yeah, so we're, people should, should consider doing yeah. it. Jasper's not a purebred. He's mm-hmm. not what you think, of, like a golden retriever kind of bouncy, floofy kind of guy. Mm-hmm. But he, you know, really enjoys being around kids. He likes the attention. So people don't need to be concerned that their dog's not a specific, like what you think of when you mm-hmm. think of maybe sort of a therapy dog. We have shelter pets. Yeah, yeah. we have purebred pets. dogs. Mm-hmm. We have um, older dogs that maybe mm-hmm. used to be agility dogs, mm-hmm. and now they're calm and want it. They need another job to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And George is really good about finding a facility to visit that matches you and mm-hmm. your dog. So, for instance, Jasper's still young at five, um, and is not super interested in laying down and listening to kids mm-hmm. read. So that the ABC program is not for him. But visits to Mary Meredith when he can see a bunch of kids and do activities with them, that's totally up his alley. And, you know, George is really instrumental in terms of finding the right fit for you and your dog. And I get to have meetings with dogs every yeah. week. So <laughs> I have no complaints in yeah. the department. Yeah. I can imagine that being a kind of a fun <laughs> part of the job. What would you bring to the table? <laughs> <laughs> what are some of the uh, facilities that you do work with in our Tucson area? We have, um, like Maureen said, Mary Meredith and a couple other schools in the Tucson School District, mm-hmm. Tucson Unified School District. We have uh, some schools in the Vail School District as well as Sunnyside. We're also involved with the Intermountain Agencies. Okay. We have two facilities that we, vi- we visit, and those are usually like preteens to teens that are being assessed and mm-hmm. living there anywhere from 30 days to 60 days. Uh, we have some... Facilities that are like outpatient counseling where they have support groups for maybe teens that are recovering from addiction Mm -hmm. or um, maybe have some something going on at home that they need some support for. So when hopefully when my dog Trilly and I pass, she would be my second therapy dog. We'll be visiting at one of those facilities called Cope. And then we have a similar uh, residential facility called Springboard for girls where Denise and her Labradors visit. And um, the girls are there for about 45 days, and she works with them and alternates her different labs every other week. I'd like to hear some more about some of the other programs. I am, I'm a lifelong reader, love books, and so the ABC <laughs> program interests me because I did see on your impact report that you had some good positive numbers coming out of that program. I'd like to hear a bit more. It's a great program because... It's weekly, and the children really do look forward to it, and it's Mm one-on-one. So what what happens is it's a 12-week program, and the first week the pet therapy team shows up with their dog, and they read a story to the entire class. It might be first, second, or third graders. And then she gets to meet with each of the three children that the reading director or the teacher has selected that need a boost with their reading, Mm -hmm. building their confidence 
confidence and getting them engaged with reading. Not necessarily teaching them to read, but helping them be comfortable and practicing their reading. Then weekly, the volunteer meets with each child 20 minutes one-on-one. The child sits on the floor with the dog and reads to the dog, and the volunteer uses what's called dog-centric speak. So if the child is struggling, the volunteer might say, well, Jasper says I can help you with this word. If you need a little help, just let me know because Jasper says it's okay. Or which, which of these books do you think Jasper would like you to read to him today? And it just kind of increases the connection mm-hmm. with the dog and the child, and that makes them more comfortable. Yeah. Another aspect that's really great about this program is there are tests that they take. So the second week, we call them fun word games, but it's really a test. <laughs> and the volunteer will kind of do a little quiz, just pointing to words to see if the child can read them and then slyly documenting them on a sheet. And then we do that test again on week seven and week 11 to see if there's been any development that's happened. Mm -hmm. And then the 12th week is a little celebration ceremony where the children get certificates with their name on them and little paw prints and they get medals. And so they they feel like they've accomplished something. And it is an accomplishment, you know, and uh, you can't undersell the importance of getting kids reading and reading out loud and learning new words and expanding uh, their vocabulary. You're listening to Lifestyle Tucson. I'm Riley, and I'm speaking with Georgette George Rossberg, Program Manager at Gabriel's Angels and Maureen McCoggan, a therapy team volunteer. I asked to hear more about their Animal Assisted Activities Program. The animal assisted activities um, that we do, usually there are between five and 10, maybe more kids. We, if the groups are bigger, we have a helping hand volunteer. So maybe they're really into helping children and they understand that there's a benefit to pet therapy, but maybe their dog isn't ready yet or they're in between pet therapy dogs. We still need them to come and help manage some of our bigger groups of kids, help develop the activities that are gonna take place at these visits and to kind of work on crowd control. So let's say Maureen <laughs> was with Jasper and she had 15 kids. Mm-hmm. They, the group just grows. The children just get closer. They kind of gravitate towards mm-hmm. the dog. And so in that case, her primary function mm-hmm. is to keep her dog safe and comfortable. To, so to have a helping hand volunteer there to do crowd control and mm-hmm. lead various exercises while she's looking after her dog is really, really helpful too. So that's another volunteer opportunity yes. for people, even if you don't have a pet, but you right. want to yes. support mm-hmm. uh, the the cause. So can I ask, how has things been over these last few years? Because, like, were you still able to go to schools, or did you have to transition anyway? Or Yeah, so um, Jasper and I, before, in the before times, mm-hmm. um, Jasper and I visited at Emerge Voices Against Violence oh, yeah. once the pandemic hit. For you know, sort of mm-hmm. obvious reasons, they had to shut to outside visitors to keep the people who were coming there safe. And so they transitioned to actually doing virtual visits with another one of our volunteers, Julia, and her dog, Spencer. Jasper's not big on watching virtual. He's not a big Zoom guy. <laughs> Neither am I, so I can't blame him. It's a rare breed. <laughs> um, but Julia and Spencer have had a really great success doing virtual visits there. Jasper and I, on the other hand, sort of had to bide our time, Mm -hmm. wait, and then got a new assignment at Mary Meredith. And so have been able to go with masks and visit the kids there. The school closed for a period of time after the the winter holidays Mm -hmm. for um, because COVID numbers were high again. So, again, we just waited and then we're going to be able to start revisiting again in March. So we miss it when we can't Mm -hmm. do it for sure. Um, and the kids miss us when we can't be there. But, um, you know, we try to go as often yeah. as we can. Schools have done a great job in terms of making it as possible as possible. Mm-hmm. So doing outdoor activities, doing activities with smaller groups, um, and then doing the virtual visits that, yeah. uh, like mm-hmm. Julia and Spencer, are incredibly good at doing. So we shut down and had maybe one virtual visit and then a couple teams that mm-hmm. were visiting in per person during that whole year and then last year summer facilities started opening up Mm -hmm. again some of them still are not open and some of them it changes every week like we could be on lockdown next week at Mm -hmm. one school district or uh, maybe all three kids in the reading program that week have been in contact with COVID Mm -hmm. so our volunteers are constantly paying attention and are in constant contact with 
the facilities that they visit so that they know what the numbers mm -hmm. are and if they need to show up or not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I felt like Gabriel's Angels has been very supportive in terms of, you know, making us feel safe and confident to go to different places. Mm -hmm. We feel supported, you know, if I don't feel like I'm comfortable going, then that's okay. And, you know, we'll figure it out. We'll get it done. So about how big is your uh, team that serves Tucson right now? We currently have anywhere between, let's say, 14 and 20 teams, okay. which the reason the number fluctuates is some retire, mm -hmm. some are onboarding right now. Uh, like the reading pro program is only 12 weeks, so they might graduate and then wait for the next semester mm -hmm. to start. So I would say on average we have 16 active teams working, sometimes less, sometimes more. I'd like to get up to 25 mm -hmm. because, like I said, we have so many facilities waiting for us. There are a number of pet therapy agencies in town, but there still aren't enough pet therapy mm -hmm. teams to serve mm -hmm. all of the children, plus all the other non-child organizations mm -hmm. that are waiting for pet therapy teams. Mm -hmm. So the more, the better, because more kids can be served. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's a great opportunity. Like, I really, I wanted to work with kids, and it happens that Jasper also really enjoys children, mm -hmm. and so we get to spend that time together and make a huge impact and give back to our community in that way. And it's really, really a special volunteer opportunity. Um, it's unlike the stuff that we do at the hospitals and that kind of thing. It's really our number one most favorite way to volunteer. <laughs> it's just so hands-on and you're really making a difference. Mm -hmm. You're not just showing up. Sometimes that's what people need. Mm -hmm. you know, when my mother was in the hospital, she needed a dog to show mm -hmm. up. And I also did because <laughs> I yeah. was waiting with my mother all day in the hospital. I needed to pet a dog. But this program is so hands-on, and you can see the children respond, and you mm -hmm. can tell you're making a difference. Mm -hmm. Like these trading cards that she yeah, showed you with Jasper, children see those, and yeah, they want them. They want to take them home and show their parents that this is the dog that they met, and this is their new friend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so you can see the relationships yeah. growing because of the core behaviors we're focusing on with our activities. Mm -hmm. Who you're working with is also, you know, if you love kids and you love pets, it's kind of just like the perfect marriage exactly. of, <laughs> of two exactly. great populations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to shift briefly to your fundraising event that is coming up. I'd like to just hear a bit more about Unleash the Love. It's going to be near the end of March. Can you tell me a bit more about yeah. what's coming up there? It's our annual fundraising breakfast it's a free breakfast. We ask that you come and listen to us tug on your heartstrings and then make a donation while you're there. Mm -hmm. It is Friday, March 25th at the Doubletree on Alverdon. And uh, we start at 7.30 registration so the people can meet the pet therapy teams outside and walk in and then be seated with their friends at the breakfast table. And then we have some great speakers that are going to tell their stories that they've experienced with pet therapy and then uh, give you a little bit more information about our organization and then ask you to support us and ask you to continue supporting us. Mm -hmm. So what we're really looking for are obviously guests to come to the breakfast, but we're also looking for some heroes that we have out there that would maybe champion a table. Mm -hmm. So they would say, okay, yes, I want to support this organization, and I think – these five friends and these three friends from work would also love this mm -hmm. organization and they will invite all those people and have a table of 10 and they would learn about who we are and who our pet therapy teams are and then follow us and support us as we go on year by year. Mm -hmm. Could you give me some examples of how uh, funds are used that you fundraise? Yes. We provide an ACT kit and an ABC kit for all of the new teams, which has... Um, foam frames to put little Polaroid pictures in and crayons and a coloring book and a brush so that the children can brush your dog and a water bowl so the children can get a water bowl and books, something called the dog Bible, which is just about dog breeds mm -hmm. and they can review how to take care of a dog at their visits. Uh, the ABC kit has a variety of leveled readers plus the bowl and the brush and um, picture books. And then we also provide games like dog bingo, which is really popular. It's <laughs> it's really funny. It's just bingo, <laughs> but with pictures of dogs. And I also love it. And then 
whatever we need. Like if you're asking us for support, we try to get it for you. Mm -hmm. All the pet therapy teams, unlike other agencies, get their trading cards of their dogs for free. Oh, whenever they run out, they mm -hmm. get new ones. They get their vest for free. And then they get our volunteer appreciation mm -hmm. breakfast mm -hmm. every year. And then also we're working hard on curriculum development. Mm -hmm. Times are changing. The way we communicate with children is changing. And I mean, Maureen, mm -hmm. maybe 10 years ago, coloring books were the thing, but now tablets are the thing. Right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> so we need to keep working on our curriculum development so we can stay relevant to the kids in town mm -hmm. and, and reach them in ways that they're comfortable mm -hmm. and, and used to being reached yeah. now. Yeah. You kind of have to meet them at their, yeah. Yeah, where absolutely. they are. Yeah. Yeah, it's, they're very, the organization is incredibly supportive of the volunteers, and we can ask for, you know, I need some crayons, I need some paper, I need, you know, we're going to do finger painting this week, can, mm -hmm. you know, we get some finger painting paper. Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm a very demanding volunteer coordinator <laughs> because I'm constantly asking them to text me pictures of their dogs. <laughs> and they just text me, you're just sitting there, just text me a picture of your dog. And then I'm happy. And they, Maureen's good about that. <laughs> a lot of my volunteers are really good about sending me pictures of, of their dogs. Mm -hmm. So, so the, it's an incredibly supportive um, organization to belong to as a volunteer. So that's like an extra added bonus mm -hmm. in addition to, you know, being able to provide our services to the community. Um, we also have a community of our own in mm -hmm. terms of the volunteer community yeah. um, that George, you know, spearheads, but then we are all a part of. So mm -hmm. that's a, that's another extra it's bonus. It's hard to be connected mm -hmm. right now when we can't have meetings. So I do implore them to meet with me on Zoom every now and then. <laughs> yeah. But they invite me to their visits so I can go mm -hmm. see some of the magical things happening and see the difference that, the yeah. children are having in their day. Mm -hmm. Well, can you just share again, um, best way people can find out more about Gabriel's Angels or information on volunteering as a, a team? Okay. Uh, visit us on the internet at uh, <laughs> gabrielsangels.org, and you'll have a way to contact us there. Our phone number is there, and you can reach out to us on email. And there's a link to our online information session if you click on the volunteer tab. And that will send me a notification that you're going to be there. And I'll reach out to you in turn so we can chat a little bit about it. Wonderful. Well, Maureen and George, I am so grateful to have gotten this opportunity to chat with you. And thank you, thank you. for all the great info. Thanks, right. cool. You've been listening to Lifestyle Tucson. That was Georgette George Rossberg, Program Manager at Gabriel's Angels, and Maureen McCoggan, a therapy team volunteer. The website again is gabrielsangels.org. If you're part of a nonprofit group or organization that would like to be featured in an upcoming episode of our Lifestyle Tucson program, you can reach out to me, Riley, by email, publicaffairs at azlotus.com. That is public affairs, all one word, at azlotus.com. For more information about the show or to listen back to something you may have missed, go to the Sunday Mornings page at mixfm.com, kfma.com, klpx.com, or espntucson.com. <laughs>